good morning or whatever time of day you're getting a chance to watch this. I wanted to take a minute and talk about the holidays because the holidays are upon us. Or if you're like me, the holidays have been upon us since October 1st because I am that person. I even have my snowflake sweater on today because I love the holidays. What I don't love about the holidays is all of the guilt and the body shaming and the diet culture stuff that starts to get pushed on us at this time of year. So I wanted to make a quick little video, say hello to everyone, say happy holidays, and talk about that. I also wanted to talk about self-care. Now, I understand that self-care is this phrase that gets thrown around and used all the time lately as a marketing tool, and it's associated with like, things like Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop website or something that like rich white women do and take care of themselves that way. Um, uh, it's become kind of a trendy thing as opposed to an actual caring for ourselves thing. I'm going to put some links down there like I always do to talk about what self-care can look like and how it can look for everybody, not just people in a certain tax bracket or people who have access to things like manicures, pedicures, chocolate, or yoga classes. Not that any of those things are bad, we just don't all have access to it, and self-care isn't always pretty. So let's talk about self-care and the holidays and how it may not look pretty. I don't know about some of you. But I have gone to family holiday gatherings where we're all eating and I have uh, relatives that think that it's appropriate because they haven't seen me in a year to say things like, gosh, you've gotten a lot bigger this year, Kai. And then they decide that they should comment on what I'm eating or if I should be eating something. I don't know if any of you experience that, but it happens to me. And for me, my choice in this situation and self-care for me looks kind of ugly because that's how I choose to tackle it. And the reason it looks ugly is because my way of dealing with this situation is taking it as an opportunity to either educate this person that their comments on my body have everything to do with their fat phobia, their fat bias, and their issues and nothing to do with mine. Sometimes that turns into an argument over the turkey and the gravy. But I'm prepared for that argument, I handle it, and I set up my body positive boundaries, which also, if you look on the blog, are down there in a post. And I'll be putting the body positive boundaries back up as the new year comes along because we're all going to be inundated with more of this diet culture stuff because New Year's resolution season is upon us. So when I get these kind of remarks about what I should be eating or what I should look like at my Thanksgiving or my Christmas or whatever other holiday you celebrate dinner, I take that stuff dead on, then I ask him to pass the wine because that's how I handle things. Um, you may not be comfortable doing that. That might not be what you wanna do to take care of yourself and that's absolutely okay. You have every right to disengage from the meal if you want to and if that looks like going, thanks, Uncle Rando, nice seeing you too, getting a to-go plate, going home, and watching your favorite series on Netflix for hours on Thanksgiving, that's entirely appropriate to do. That's also self-care. Or if for you, because it's easier to get through the family holiday, it looks like just nodding, dismissing it in your head, and moving on with the pumpkin pie, that's okay too. Whatever it takes to care for you in the holiday season. Whether it looks ugly, whether it makes people uncomfortable, what's important is that you are taking care of yourself. And I know that might sound selfish, but you can't take care of anybody else until you take care of yourself. So it's important to look out for how you feel and how you get through these holidays. The holidays are hard for some people and you deserve to have the best holiday you can. My second point I wanted to get on is, in addition to dealing with these fun family interactions sometimes, not all people use wine to get through like I do. I'm kidding, mostly. Um, but you're also going to be inundated because it's starting with the guilt and the diet culture and the pressure from fitness and health professionals, especially in social media and commercials on TV. It's coming. Brace yourself, guys. Winter is coming and so is diet culture with the New Year's resolution ads. You are going to be told what diet program you need, what workout you need to be doing, how you need to get to the gym on January 1st along with 3,000 of your closest friends. 
And you are also going to be inundated with these posts and this information about how you need to earn or work off whatever you ate during the holidays. No. Food is food. And if you're making choices that are psychologically and physically healthy for you and what makes you feel good at the time, you owe nobody a damn thing. You don't have to earn a piece of pumpkin pie. You don't have to burn off that turkey. All you have to do is make healthy psychological and physical choices for your body. Keep that in mind every time somebody posts something telling you how many burpees you have to do that, equi that are equal to whatever it is you ate. Look at it, laugh at it, dismiss it, and move on with your day. You don't have to earn anything. I promise you. Okay? And I'm going to post some resources again down there showing you why shame-based and guilt-based feelings wrapped around food complicate things even more and are really bad for your stress and your health. And if there's anything all of us want is to get through the holidays with as least stress as possible, be able to enjoy the people we love, enjoy ourselves, and have a break. And if you're me, try to get through family dinner with all my extended family without dropping an F-bomb. Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. Happy holidays, whatever you celebrate.